Yeah, he's happy. And would be. And he's going to get a chance to play uh, all season long. Uh, that's really his first opportunity like this. Spelled uh, Montana. Had a 300-yard game last year, albeit on a losing uh, performance. Uh, but the Chiefs, though, uh, you know, they slid backwards last year. Championship game uh, the year before. Nine and seven last year. Need the win over the Raiders to get in the playoffs at the end. Uh, losing the first round of Miami. So that they need to, to change some things. Now, Mel, if we look at value at this point, we thought there'd be seven offensive linemen gone uh, in the first round. There are several of those that are left. Is that the best value for the Chiefs here? I don't think there's any question, Chris. Unfortunately for the Chiefs, they did miss out on Brockermeyer by a couple picks. Uh, you know, Carolina wisely traded up to get him, or they would have not have seen him still there at that point. Brian DeMarco is still there. Big kid, 31 of the last 33 games at Michigan State. He started one of the strongest players in the draft. We roll uh, to the next group. Zach Wieger can play guard or tackle, dominant run blocker. Pass protection needs to be developed. Barrett Brooks is a big kid who played in that pro offense at, with Phil Snyder at Kansas State. Tony Birdie's versatility is what's a plus, also a long snapper. And Ingram probably figures late second, early third round. So that's uh, the look at the offensive line. And the Chiefs have about eight minutes to go on the clock. Uh, after that, it'll be Green Bay. And then we uh, motor on into the second round where, as opposed to 15 minutes of pick in the first round, the second round, we really get out on the highway and put it into third gear. <laughs> we go at 10 picks, uh, 10, 10 minutes per pick in the second round where there are also... 32 picks. We'll be back with pick 31 in the first round for the Chiefs right after this. Today's cars and trucks are more advanced than ever, but there is a price. Their harder working engines can wreak havoc on the motor oil, breaking it down almost immediately. That's why Castrol GTX provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, or your harder working engine could make things hard on you. Castrol GTX, engineered for greater protection against breakdown. Try Super Clean, the tough task cleaner degreaser from Castrol. While you're in bed and sweetly dreaming, somebody's mama is making biscuits. Made from scratch, hot and steaming, fresh from the kitchen at Hardee's. Rise and shine, omelet lovers. The ultimate omelet biscuit at Hardee's has egg, crisp bacon, and two kinds of cheese. Right now, it's one of our daily breakfast biscuit specials, each just 99 cents. Ultimate omelet, just 99 cents. Fresh from the kitchen at Hardee's. We asked some of the hottest guys in town to trade their deodorant for Degree deodorant. I'll give it a shot. As your body heat rises, only Degree releases extra protection against odor. It does work better than many trades I've made. Degree deodorant for a higher degree of protection. From across the seas, Bex delivers the grand tradition and taste of the German art of brewing. Bex, the number one imported German beer. You could never wear a suit again. You could not laugh when it's not funny. You could go off and write that novel, climb that mountain, buy those shoes. You could fly in the face of convention or drive there. Find your own road. Sob. And we are back at the NFL draft. About uh, five minutes to go here with the Chiefs pick. And by the way, in case you missed it, the Kansas City Chiefs, Joe Montana retired. They got the next best available Canton-bound San Francisco 49er players. They signed Ronnie Lott this week to a three-year contract. They also, remember, signed Hasty and Washington, who are also, they have three-fourths of the Jets' defensive backfield from last year. I'm not really sure what that means, but they're all now members of the Kansas City Chiefs. But Ronnie Lott now... Member of the Chiefs, Joe gone, Ronnie Lott in. Um, so with the Chiefs up, now let's, where are we going? Chris Mortensen in Carolina? 
Does that sound good? There you are. Hey, Mortimer. Hey, give Chris. us a hint on the Chiefs because I think it's O-line or DB, don't you? Yeah, I think it's got to be O-line or DB. But there, at some point, Chris, it just seems to me like the, the Chiefs and some other clubs have to start addressing whether they take a quarterback. Uh, Montana's retired. Bono's only started about a dozen games in his pro career. Jury still out of Matt Blunden, who I think is over the world lead. They've signed Rich Gann and they're with the Chiefs. You know, pretty soon you're going to have to start looking at guys like Chad May of Kansas State, Rob Johnson uh, of USC, Cordell Stewart, Eric Zire of Georgia. Uh, I think that at some point one of these teams is going to jump at a quarterback and all the other teams are going to fall in line too, start jumping at quarterbacks as well. Chris? You know, Morta, I think that's a good uh, comment. Uh, originally we thought that these slots here, which would be Jacksonville and Carolina, had it gone another way, had the Brunel trade not been made, uh, which was yesterday, by Jacksonville, and had Carolina not moved down and taken Kerry Collins, that each of these teams would have picked at the bottom of the first, the top of the second, a quarterback here. So we're going to get with Joe here pretty quickly about the next level of quarterbacks and who, and who might be next. The pick is coming in for the Chiefs, but I, I think that's something to keep track of here with Kansas City, and a good comment, Morta, though it, it pains me to admit it. Uh, let's go up to the podium and uh, check out the commissioner. Or let's just check out the well, podium. Yeah, as, as you know, one thing, podium looks good, by the just way. Just one point on what Mort said. I think he's right on. Don't forget, Sensrum comes out of that Sandy, uh, San, uh, Stanford offense, yes. which is basically what Kansas City's running now under Paul Hackett. So it would be a natural move. I don't know if anybody wanted to take him quite that high, maybe a second round. Another well, quarterback, too, Joe, moved up is Dave Barr from California. Right. After that another. injury, after some good workouts, he's back into the mid to late second round area. Jay Trent, Barker. Current, what do we got here? What color we got? Uh, See that blue, blue now? Is it blue? But it's a, if it is, it's a small trade. <laughs> no, it's white. With the uh, 31st selection, the Kansas City Chiefs uh, select uh, tackle from the University of Michigan, Trezell Jenkins. Oh. There's the final a... pick in the first round is now uh, in the hands of the Green Bay Packers, which are on the clock. Well, Mel, there's a guy that you didn't really have on your board. What happened here? He was on the board, Chris. He's not this high. That's what I mean. <laughs> now, he was considered, I thought, a third-round pick going in, and he had a lot of trouble with Hugh Douglas. Here he gets the best of them, but in that particular game, he had a lot of trouble. Uh, what he's got is great potential. He hasn't been a great player yet. He really needed another year in Michigan, at Michigan, I thought. Uh, what he does is, concentration-wise, seems to slack off, and if you do that in the NFL, Chris, Joe Montana will be fortunate he retired. Uh, and wasn't back at Kansas City this year. Uh, hopefully, he won't be forced in. I don't think he's ready. And as Joe mentioned earlier, they have three uh, players whose contracts are up. So I think Carl Peach is trying to protect himself. And it's Rodell Jenkins, who, like I said, could have been back at Michigan next year and needs more seizing, needs more intensity, needs more concentration. Uh, like I said, this is a potential pick based on his great physical ability, Joe. I think the one thing you're going to get, and I, I don't disagree with it, I definitely think that the junior should stay in school. I think what he's going to get, he's going to get tremendous intensity when he goes to Kansas City. Marty, Marty Schottenheimer's workout programs for his ball clubs have been absolutely incredible. He will be ready. He will grow two years in one year. One of the things Joe Montana mentioned was getting up so early to have to be in as a quarterback for the workouts. I mean, Marty really works his players. He's certainly going to get a chance to become, I think, a better man as a football player, and I think it's going to help the offensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs in the long run. So two straight Big Ten players going. Craig Powell, linebacker, Ohio State. Trezell Jenkins, tackle Michigan. Let's go to Gary Danielson, our, uh, our Big Ten man, for a little scoop on, on Jenkins. Wow. You agree pretty much what uh, Mel said? Are you kind of surprised here? I'm a little surprised, although he had a good hula bowl game. He was matched up against Hugh Douglas in that game, and he fought him the whole game. But I, I still am a little surprised, although my prediction, I, I didn't get to say it on TV. There's no, I, I feel like I've been up here like Dennis Fung for a long time, but I still haven't said all I wanted to say. Uh, I thought 10 Big Ten players would go in the first round. That's the ninth Big Ten player. But I have to say I'm a little surprised it's Trezell Jenkins. I, I had Corey Raymer going in the first round, and I thought Fletcher would go in the first round. So a great year for the Big Ten, but uh, Jenkins has a lot of work to do. And uh, at Michigan, he wasn't even their best offensive lineman. So good luck to Kansas City. they got a lot of work with him. He's got a lot of raw talent, but uh, a lot of work to do. Well, Chris? Gary, that, Gary, that uh, thank you. That is the uh, sixth offensive lineman. We've had seven defensive linemen. We'll wait for the one more pick and then total it up in the first round. But 18 offense, 13 defense at this point with the Green Bay Packers picking in the 32nd and final spot uh, in the first round. And we will be back with the Pack in New York in a moment.
Are your savings caught in an MCI friends and family circle? With MCI, I was with friends and family. Everybody that I wanted to call, they had to be part of my friends right. and family. Otherwise, I wouldn't get the discount. Is it worth the hassle? I don't like the calling server. I didn't like the list. With AT&T True Savings, spend just $10 a month. Subtract 25% off your AT&T bill. Guaranteed. Call 1-800-GET-TRUE today. It is a true savings. Okay, it tells you bottom line. You spend this amount of money, you get this percentage savings. It would be about 25% off for our family, which would be great. Call anyone, anytime, anywhere in the U.S. and save 25%. There's no complicated, fussy things to do. It works. True savings gets even better. Spend $50 a month, subtract 30% off your AT&T bill. Switch to AT&T today. Your bill gets higher, you're saving a little more money. You agree to do it. You don't need any anybody else's approval. MCI customers switch to AT&T today and switch free. As a matter of fact, I think I'll be making the call today. Your true voice. This NHL season, it's all crunch time. So when they ice it, ice it, hook it, hook it, save it, save it, stick it, stick it, stop it, stop it, play it, play it, and score it, score it, you'll need to know. NHL Tonight on ESPN2. ESPN2. News, features, and highlights. Sports Center for the Hockey Attic. Tuesday through Saturday at 11.30 p.m. As the clock winds down, the season heats up on ESPN2. Kyle Brady, the surprise draft pick of the Jets uh, in the number nine slot, the tight end, number 81. And he's one of the, is with Rich Cotite, his new head coach, and he's one of three Penn State players that has been selected in the first round, along with Kajana Carter, Kerry Collins. So uh, Penn State and the Nittany Lions at three in the top nine. Florida State is three with Alexander Bush and Brooks. Michigan has three with Tyrone Wheatley to the Giants, Ty Law to the Pats, and Trezell Jenkins a moment to go to the Chiefs. Joey Galloway from Ohio State, along with Corey Stringer and Craig Powell. They all make it. So nine Big Ten uh, players selected thus far in the draft, and you just saw all nine of them. The next most from any conference is the Pac-10 with five. So those that say, well, you know, the Rose Bowl, we don't have the national champs and everything. Guess what? There are more players uh, from the two conferences to play in the Rose Bowl than any other conference uh, around. So, so far, Big Ten nine, Pac-10 five, if you're scoring at home. The Packers are now on the board. They really would like certainly a, uh, a running back, but they weren't there because Chicago took that in the slot just above them at 21 with Prashan Salam. So the Packers traded that number 22 spot to Carolina, who took Tyrone Poole there. That's why the Packers are 10, uh, are 10 slots down in the number 32 spot overall. That's where we are with nine minutes left on their clock. Chris Mortensen, uh, any clue where the Packers are going to go? Well, I think there's a couple teams on the phone with them still trying to trade in the Green Bay spot. You know, they, they have some defensive back needs, obviously. You mentioned Tyrone Poole. Uh, you know, they came so close to getting Rob Moore yesterday, Chris. Uh, it just, they couldn't quite get together on the compensation. The Jets had a better package. They, they came close on Rob Moore, and they're having trouble getting Keith Jackson in the camp and, and Buddy Ryan, Arizona Cardinals, actively trying to get Keith Jackson right now. And, and I think the Packers would like a second-round pick for Keith Jackson's right. Keith has one year left on his contract, but he's told the Packers he's not coming, and so he would like to go to Arizona, or, he, or he's basically saying he's going to retire. But right now... Well, the Packers, again, we talked about them a while ago, Morton and, and, and Joe, that they really had a nice thing going. They, they were certainly a rung below San Francisco and Dallas, but they look to be moving into that definite number three slot in the NFC. That Sharp went down at the end of the year. They won their opening playoff game at home, the first one in Lambeau in a long time. Then they went down and got waxed uh, by the Cowboys. Uh, but now Sharp hurt, Pop gone. They, they bring in Mark Ingram and what they hope was Keith Jackson to kind of change things. If Keith Jackson would play with the Packers, if Robert Brooks will catch 80 balls, Keith Jackson will catch 80 balls, Ingram will catch 50 balls, Edgar Bennett will catch 50 balls out of the back. It would be a good productive place for Keith Jackson to play pro football, but they're having trouble bringing him in.